So I'm just coming from a patient's house and I was thinking to myself, people never talk about how to interact with a brand new patient when you've seen them, you've never seen them. How do you interact with them to make sure that they feel comfortable? Whether you're in a hospital, whether you are a doctor, nurse, whether you're a home health nurse, hospice nurse, this video is very, very important for you because first impressions are everything. First impressions really make the whole care. And so we're gonna talk about a few quick tips and how you can make sure that your first impression, but also help you understand how important basic soft skills are when it comes to patient care. Let's go. We are in the home healthcare industry, but this, these principles kind of apply to every, every situation because there's always going to be a door and the door is usually right before you walk in to see a patient, right? So whether you're in home health, it's gonna be a door before you enter into the home. Whether you're in the hospital, there's gonna be a door before you walk in and meet the patient. Outpatient, doctor's office practice, there's a door before you walk in. There's always a door. And so here's one quick tip that I kinda of like to do whenever I'm gonna go see a patient or see someone for the very first time I think about that door and I think about they've never seen me and I've never seen them, but I want to make sure that I'm coming in in a very humble state because I'm a guest. So I'll give you an example today, walked in, this is home health, right? So I walked in, knocked on the uh, patient's door, they opened and they said, hi, how can I help you? I introduced myself. I had my badge. And I said, hi, I'm Charles with Charlotte Health Services. Uh, we're here to take care of your loved one. This, at this specific uh, example, this was a hospice patient. Is it okay if I come in? And is it okay if I come in is essential, right? Because we are guests. It doesn't matter if you're in the hospital, doesn't matter if you're outpatient, doesn't matter. We are a guest because we're entering into their space, right? And so if we are honoring them and saying, hey, is it okay if I come in? It's like, oh, wow, yeah. Um, so I, they said, yes, please come in. The next thing is um, where I'm walking into their home, into their space, they walk, let, let me into the, into the home. So now imagine, say friends, you're a doctor or a nurse in the hospital, you'll be knocking and you would introduce yourself and you say, hey, this is nurse so-and-so, is it okay if I come in? Though that little phrase alone gives the respect and the autonomy to the patient. It lets them know that they are in charge and they are, they're here. It's a service, it's customer service, right? So I walked in, said, hey, thank you so much. And I looked around the, the room, it was the home living room. And I was just scanning the room, talking to the, um, the at this time, this was the medical power of attorney and say, I said, wow, this is a beautiful house. Love your, love your uh, furniture. You know, try to compliment their space. You walk into the hospital, same thing. You walk and say, hey, how are you doing? You look at what's around their space. You look at the person and you look at them. Maybe they may have a, a mug or some type of bag. Uh, maybe a, they may be a Michigan fan. You say, hey, oh, are you a Michigan fan? Uh, you see a little coffee mug or something. You try to compliment their space, compliment that area because it makes them feel welcomed, right? And so I did that. It already kind of made them feel like, okay, this person's genuine. Body language, I'm open, right? I'm not, I'm not scrunched up. I'm not, I don't have a frown, my face smiling. I'm, uh, I'm eye contact. I'm looking at them, looking at, you know, what is their disposition? Uh, are they scared? Are they afraid? Are they not sure? I'm looking and analyzing them and seeing what is their disposition to me right? Um, are they worried? And I look at that. And then I address that from that perspective. Uh, at this specific example, this was a hospice visit, right? So they, I could, tent, I could see that they were tense. So I tried to make them feel comfortable way before I started talking about what it is that I was going to talk about, right? So I, I 
try to you try to, you try to have to de-escalate the situation really to make sure that they feel comfortable because they have to put their guard down in order for you to help serve them and educate them and, and, and give your expertise. So I scanned the room, did that, uh, and then the next steps they felt comfortable and I said, hey, so you know, how would you like for me to proceed? We um, in this specific example, I got an order from doctor, a certain doctor. They called, we did an uh, education on a Hospice 101, and I stated my purpose for why I was there. And once I stated my purpose, I then asked them, is it okay if we move forward with this and put the ball back in their court? Is it okay if we do this? So we have a purpose as healthcare workers, we have a purpose as providers, is a reason and an agenda why we're, why we're going to see the patient. We know that. Sometimes the patient knows that, but they don't know that as in they know it in part because we are the experts we're the trained clinicians we know what we're doing but they don't our job is to help bridge the gap between what we know and what we what they don't know and the only way to do that is to make sure that they feel comfortable a lot of times you may walk into situations where it's not smooth patients agitated there's hostility um and you have to be able to find a way to make sure that they're comfortable, acknowledge their frustrations, acknowledge their pain, acknowledge the situation that they may be dealing with at that point. You have to acknowledge it. Like, yeah, I understand. You know, definitely understand. I, I'm sorry. I've, I actually said that where I understand. And they say, no, you don't understand. And then I'll say, you're right. I don't understand. But I can empathize with you that this is challenging. Right? Those small tones, those small words, that language helps to kind of put the patient and the family at ease. And if we're not doing that as healthcare workers, if we're not doing that as healthcare practitioners, if we are not acknowledging the patient and giving them the respect, the autonomy, the right, uh, uh, and the honor, they will not listen to whatever it is that we have to tell them. They will not feel that they are heard. Uh, all the clinical needs, the medications, the plan of care, uh, the strategy, the outcomes to help with their disease process, it'll go in one ear, out the other. Uh, but we have to make sure we acknowledge the patient first and, and address their needs and address their frustrations. So, so in this situation, this hospital situation, uh, the, the family was making some really um, uh, serious needs serious uh, wants um, and it was really outside of the scope of what hospice is made for right and this is a very good example it doesn't have to be just hospice it could be any situation they may say some outlandish things but you have to look at the root of why they're saying these things uh, so I diagnosed this um, this situation and I realized okay it's, it's deeper than just what they're saying uh, this person wants to make sure that their wife is taken care of well, right? They want to make sure this husband has been the sole provider of this, of his wife, um, and she's not doing well, and he's scared, and he wants to make sure that everything is taken care of because this is his wife, and he loves her, and whoever you are, I don't know who you are, but I need to make sure that you're gonna love and take care of my wife in the same manner that I have for 56 years. And that's the truth. That's kind of the truth when it comes to all of these situations. It's, you gotta to listen to what they're saying, what they're trying to say without them saying it. Because a lot of times what they're saying is not what they're saying. They're actually saying something that they're not saying, but you gotta to listen to what they're not saying to understand what they're saying. What? Bro, what are you talking about, man? Hey, hey, did you follow me on that? I'm not going to say it again, but you got, actually, I will say it again. So you got to listen to what they're saying, even when they're not saying what they're saying, because what they're not saying is actually what they're saying. Okay, that's enough. That's enough. That's good. But you, you get what I'm saying, right? You understand what I'm saying. And as a healthcare worker, as a healthcare clinician, you all know what I'm talking about. It's, it's, it's understanding them, putting them, yourself in their shoes, and then addressing it. Because they may make some outlandish things, but you can't just say, no, we don't do that. No, we don't provide that. No, we don't do this. No, we don't do that. 
you really have to understand and meet them where they're at to kind of see what it is what is what is it that they're looking at they're saying something a lot deeper than what they need to say and so you really have to figure out okay what is it that they're saying how are they saying it and how can i help them because if you just write them off it may be just them in their emotions and you may actually be able to help them understand and get them off of that emotional experience which it is being being a patient and you have any if you're in the hospital how home health outpatient whatever it is uh it's emotional it's a disease you're in the hospital you're vulnerable emotions are high it's going to happen you just have to be aware of that and when they're high people say some crazy things and when they say some crazy things you can't take offense you can't take offense you can't target it at yourself you as a clinician you are a doormat I know it sounds crazy. If you're a doctor, you're you're still a doormat. If you are a nurse, a therapist, you are a doormat because you are here. You're in the service. You're the, you're in the service industry. You're here to serve, and so you have to understand that. You have to realize that when people say some crazy things, you got to take it like a punching bag. And but the thing is, it it, it does hurt sometimes. You can't take offense to it. You got to take all those things and realize that they that sometimes patients are yelling at you from a, an experience that they had, an experience that they had that was literally 30 years ago and they are basically saying, "Hey, I'm upset with you and I'm just going to put it all out on you." And you can't take it. You can't take it that way. And so, you know, that, that, that's really the biggest things to think about when you are talking and you're making a first impression, uh, just make sure that you are your guest, you're welcoming, you're a doormat. Um, you don't take offense to things. Um, watch what you say. Ask. Make sure you put the honor and the respect back in their hands. Is it okay if I do this? Is it okay if we proceed? Is it all right if we do such and such? Um, you state why you're there, but you also ask and hey, ask if is it okay if I do this? You know, is it okay if we get up right now and uh, and go ahead and move to from this bed to this bed? We're gonna do some therapy, um, and they may refuse, but then you say, hey, I understand you may be tired, but we really need to do this because I'm here to help you. I'm here to help encourage you. I'm here to help do this. Um, they may not be listening to what you're saying, so I definitely understand, uh, but this is what the doctor ordered, this is what the doctor said, and I'm here to help make sure uh, that, that we can accomplish something together. I know this is scary for you, I understand, I, and I may not be going through it myself, but I can empathize with you because I've seen families go through this so many times, I've seen patients go through this so many times, I've been doing this for X amount of years, um, and I can't even imagine what you're going through, but I can empathize with it. And I'm here to walk with you through it. Those words are so powerful for patients to hear um, because then they know that you care. Once they know that you care, then you can accomplish some things to help them get better on the track to better. And sometimes they may not get better, especially with hospice, but you can help them in the midst of the storm, make the storm a little bit more manageable. So that's my two cents for today. I hope this helps. If you liked this, please like and subscribe. If you want to hear more things about bedside manners, soft skills, um, approach, how to approach patients, click, comment, do what you need to do. I hope uh, you guys are having a good day and we'll see you guys next time. Bye. Peace.